Over the last year, DWM has been my daily driver for Tiling Window Manager, and I love DWM. There aren't many things that I dislike about it. But the point is, DWM is great, and I've spent the last year, maybe even two years, living in it and being perfectly happy. But my inability to have attention on a single thing and not change things around and switch things and try new things and go back to old things and all this stuff is a real problem for me. I like to do, I like to switch things up. It's just the nature of my personality, I suppose. So I'm changing window managers. Now I've made this video before. The last time was with BSPWM and I lived there for over a month. And I liked BSPWM. I had a lot of good things to say about it. I also had some negative things to say about it. But ev eventually after that video, I moved back to DWM. And I've also lived for a whole month in Plasma. I recently made a video on that experience and it turns out that I'm not a floating window manager slash desktop environment guy anymore. I just can't get my head around organizing my windows in that way anymore. It just it seems to be beyond me. So I'm switching window managers. I think I already said that, but I am switching window managers and the window manager that I've chosen to go to is Old Faithful. I'm going back to i3. Now, i3 was my first window manager, it was my first tiling window manager, and uh, I had a many, I have many, many good memories of i3, so I've decided to go back to i3. And this is what my setup looks like so far, and I have to say, it's a, don't worry about the rice, I, the, the rice is kind of a mixture of one dark and cat poussin or whatever the hell you call it. So I'm still working on that, but the point is, is that I've switched to i3. Now, the reason why, let's just talk about the reason why. Beyond the fact that I have the the whole ADD when it comes to um, everything, <laughs> I, I, I can't be happy with what I have. I have to make changes. That's just the way things work. But beyond that, there are a few things that were lacking in DWM that I'm looking for in a new window manager. And surprisingly enough, or unsurprisingly enough, if you've followed the channel for any amount of time, you'll know that the uh, the thing that I like most about tiling window managers is the fact that they have workspaces up the wahoo, and <laughs> you can do a lot of configuration with workspaces. The thing about DWM is that it's kind of curtailed at 18 now. I never really got upset with the fact that there were only 18. 18 is about right usually i have 20 but they're cl it's close enough the number really wasn't the point more it was my ability to interact with those workspaces through key bindings so there are patches and stuff that you can go through and, and use in order in dwm in order to make sure that each workspace has a key binding associated with it i've never been able to get that patch to work i don't know if it's the patch or if i'm just doing something stupid either one of those things is po is possible but the point is, is that in order to change workspaces, you have to have that monitor in focus, and then you can go through and use the appropriate key bindings in order to switch workspaces. And that has always bothered me. It's, that just really does bother me that I have to do this two-stepping in order to get to a workspace on a monitor that's not in focus. So with i3, because I can go through and basically create whatever key bindings I want, whether that's in SXHKD or in the i3 config file itself, I can go through and assign key bindings to how many ever workspaces I have. I can, and I can have as many workspaces as I want. I'll probably just stick to 15 or 20. That's a reasonable number. But being able to assign key bindings to each and every one of those means that it doesn't matter where that workspace is on which monitor it's on. All I need to know is what key binding that is, and I can go there. That's cool. The other thing that I wanted to do when switching tiling window managers was find a window manager that didn't have its a built-in bar. And while i3 does have its own bar, it's dead simple to disable. All you have to do is uh, uh, comment out a few lines in its configuration file or delete them, and it goes away. You, then you can use whatever bar you want. And I want to use polybar. I, I like polybar. I, I can go through and configure polybar pretty much however I want it to. And that's not the case with the DWM bar. Like, there's a ton of patches you can go through and do and, and get things colored and, and adding scripts. It's fine. But the stock DWM bar is limited in the amount of customization you can do without just adding a ton of patches. And most of those patches conflict with each other. It's a real pain in the ass. I did try the Anybar patch for DWM, which allows you to use other patches and getting polybar to work in DWM is a pain in the rear end. It is so painful. Now it is possible. Uh, it's not, 
it's not as if it's it's so difficult that you can't do it. It's just there's so many steps you have to go through to do, and there's so many things that you have to have in perfect working order in order for it to work. It's kind of like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. It's it's very much if you d don't do it and you're missing a piece, it won't work. Not a big deal if you follow the directions and get through it, but it was just a pain in the butt. And then at their end result, there were still some things in Polybar that just didn't work well with DWM. It just, even if you have the DWM Polybar fork enabled or installed, it doesn't work the way Polybar works in other window managers. It's close, but it's not quite there. And it just felt lagging to me. So I decided I was going to search out for another window manager and I settled on i3. I think some of the reason why I settled on i3 is simply familiarity. I like the configuration file. I know pretty much everything there is about it. I like the documentation of i3. I think it's probably the best documentation of any window manager out there. So if there's a situation where I come into where where I don't know what I'm doing, I can always go look that up. Like, for example, I've never set up a scratch pad in i3. I have no clue how it's done. When I used i3 previously as a daily driver, I didn't know what a scratch pad was. You know, it wasn't until I got into DWM where I started using scratch pads. So that's going to be an adventure. It's something that I'm kind of looking forward to. So, uh, yeah, I've switched to i3. Now, the question is always, how long will I be here? The answer to that question is, nah, I don't know. I'm sure something else, ooh, something shiny, you know what I mean? <laughs> Eventually, I will get distracted. I know that Tyler and I are going to be doing something called Rice Wars here pretty soon, and we've chosen Spectre WM as our window manager to Rice, so if that turns out to be awesome, uh, I may end up switching to that, who knows? I also know that uh, Left WM has gone through and just done a ton of work since the last time I tried it, so I also want to give that a try, so... Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe for those videos because those should be really fun. I want to do more window manager stuff on the channel. I'm a big windows manager guy and I've kind of gotten away from them over the last six months or so and done more racing videos. And while I enjoy, like, I, I enjoy those time lapse racing videos way more than anybody else does, mostly because they're dead simple to make. Like, I don't have to talk through those things and it's fantastic. It's like making a video without having to do any work. I was going to rice anyways, I record it, and then just increase the speed by 500%, and I have a video. It's awesome. But they're not popular. I understand that. So I'm going to go through and do more window manager uh, first looks, uh, customization tutorials, and stuff like that. If you're interested in that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I really do appreciate those of you who have already done so. You can follow me on Twitter, at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon, at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A. Devon, Patrick L. Primus, Marcus Meglin, Jack Sam Tool, Steve Egg, CyberGuy Lennox, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin E., Merrick Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, Peter A., Crucible, Dark Bandit 6, and Vlad A. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.